Good morning, children. Uh, yesterday we were studying the chapter on resources in geography, but I have been informed uh, that uh, that chapter has already been covered, and you have completed that chapter. So today we come to the chapter in political science, the fourth chapter, which is about gender, religion, and caste. Now, if you look at them, uh, gender, we all know what gender is, that is male and female, religion, we all know what it is about, of course, and caste, we also know what it is about. But the interesting thing about, uh, students, you have to understand, now you are in class 10, so start thinking like a senior student, right? Now, the interesting thing about these things are when you look at them individually, that is gender, that is, yes, male or female, religion, okay, fine, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, Sab, Bhai, Bhai, and all of that, and caste, of course, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas and everything. If you look at them separately, they appear to be harmless, you know, and do not appear to be having much connection with, with each other. But then uh, now we would see in this chapter that all these three things are deeply connected. And once you make a cocktail of these things, which otherwise were appearing very harmless, right? And as just a matter of fact thing, there's nothing to talk about, gender or male or female, religion or Bajrangbali or Allah, whatever it is, and caste. Guys, but now if you combine them, they are not harmless anymore. They uh, actually take a different dimension altogether. And this is what we would study in this chapter, gender, religion, and caste. So let's start uh, this chapter, gender and politics. Now, boys and girls, I brought up to believe that um, the main responsibility of a woman is housework and bringing up children. This is reflected in the sexual division of labor in most families. Women do all the work inside the home, such as cooking, cleaning, washing clothes, tailoring, looking after children, etc. And men do all the work outside the home. It is not that men do not do housework. They, are simply, they simply think that it is for the women to attend these things. Guys, uh, uh, you have to understand one very important thing here. Now, this chapter particularly, it appears to be a chapter which was written in probably, I wonder, 1970 or 1980 or something like that. Because if you read this chapter, there are many passages in this uh, 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 chapter which kind of talk about an India which existed in 1970s and 80s where women were very, very... Uh, uh, oppressed lord and then they used to be always uh, obeying whatever the men wanted them to do but today in 21st century that is after 40 years guys this is not the India which exists even in the poorest of families and even in the villages where uh, women do all the housework and men are uh, kind of working outdoors and, and no one allows the women to go out and they are being you know like they show used to show it in the early movies where the um, the boy child has been given a glass of milk and the girl child has not been offered any guys those days are long gone right women um, men do all the housework these days and women uh, of course are also going to the offices they can they drive cars they ride scooters they work in offices they go to colleges now there is no discrimination uh, whereby a girl would, child would be sent to some inferior jilla school or saraswati vidya mandir or something like that and the son would be sent to some doom school or um, uh, weinberg allen or woodstock or scholars home or something like that right so there is this is not the India which exists right now. The society has undergone a huge change over the last 30-40 years. But yes, um, this is more to be uh, seen with, in my opinion at least, uh, you know, more to be seen with, yes, uh, yes, um, uh, as a measurement of what it was and what it is now. Because students, you must have seen it even during uh, this uh, uh, lockdown period over the last uh, two, three months, uh, that your, uh, your, your father must have been contributing really heavily um, in the housework. Okay, uh, It is not that key, only your mother would have been doing something and you were um, cleaning utensils and especially when maid servants were not around cleaning utensils cooking food and your father was just uh, watching netflix or watching television impossible and i'm sure uh, you must have seen that yes 
uh, men also do all the housework and it is not now that uh, men are just kind of uh, treating themselves as kings and emperors and uh, the men are kind of uh, subjected to all that oppression and uh, whatever there is. But yes, let's uh, come, in, uh, come back to the chapter. Now, second paragraph, the results of the division of, but yes, students, uh, but one very important thing. You were in this chapter often come across this word called division division and gender division labor division uh, guys when you as i said when you look at these terms gender it's very harmless religion it's harmless caste it's harmless but then the moment you start talking about their division okay and you start segregating them and then you start putting characters into those words then it starts getting more and more complicated uh, so let's see uh, the result of this division of labor is that all although women constitute half of the humanity their role in public life especially politics is minimal in most societies earlier only men were allowed to participate in public affairs vote and contest for uh, pol uh, public offices gradually the gender issue was raised in politics women in different parts of the world organized and agitated for equal rights there were agitations in different countries for the extension of voting rights to women. These agitations uh, demanded enhancing the uh, political and the legal status of women. Yes. Now, students, this, is, this has been a journey of uh, liberation for uh, the women um, internationally, not just in India, but internationally. And you have to understand one very important thing, students, here. Now, it is not just about uh, that uh, women had to struggle for their place within the society. Now, if you, uh, you, you're in class, you must have studied in class 9 French Revolution, right? Now, what happened in French Revolution? Do you think that the poor, that the men had uh, equal rights uh, like the clergy and the nobility or the aristocracy? Clearly not, right? It was all about who had the maximum amount of resources. They had more power with them. The people who did not have resources, they were the oppressed lot. It was nothing to do with that a man or a woman or something like that, you know. Uh, one of the very important uh, characters of the French Revolution, uh, you know, was the wife of King Louis the Sixteenth. that is Marie Antonia. Uh, Marie Antonia was definitely a woman, right, uh, who uh, was ultimately... Uh, beheaded, you know, because it was considered that she was misusing her authority. And uh, while the people were dying out of hunger, uh, she was having uh, uh, a very pompous and a very celebrated lifestyle. So, guys, it is nothing about that men or women, you know, given, a, given an opportunity, whether man or woman, they all have treated their their subjects with uh, uh, disdain and they have not been very good to them you know they have always been harsh on the poor given an opportunity given an opportunity with a man or a woman they always misuse that position here it is not about uh, the gender thing at all you have to understand that millions of men were also fighting against the um, oppression of uh, the uh, French nobility and the French clergy and the French emperor. It was not that all the men were, uh, were very, very satisfied and happy within the empire and only the women were the oppressed lot. Everyone was in the same boat and uh, uh, even when you have to talk about aristocracy and the nobility, there were many, many women who were misusing that position okay while uh, millions of uh, french women did not have uh, decent clothes to wear they used to wear the dirty clothes for days and days and days while um, you know, the other uh, women of the aristocracy were having the best of linen and the best of cotton the best of silk right so it is not about man or a woman and a woman being oppressed habitually and men being the uh, oppressors habitually it's Guys, it is throughout the history, uh, even in Europe for that matter, you have to understand. Queen Elizabeth was um, uh, the, the ruler even uh, of England, uh, even in the 16th century, right? So it was, it was not that she, she was the Queen of England, right? Even the current Queen of England, uh, the ruler of England, or rather the 
uh, emperor of ruler hap uh, of England happens to be the queen. That is Queen Elizabeth again, Elizabeth II, of course. So you have to understand that it is not that you can brand the same thing everywhere, right? That uh, women have been the oppressed and men have been the oppressors. It has not been so. Uh, you cannot generalize that. Different societies have had a different, um, the, the position of uh, 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 females have been different in different societies and it is not that they have been forced to take those positions within those societies. There are many women even today, students uh, who are educated, they can have any job uh, they want if they actually want, but they prefer to be housewives. Right? So it is not that uh, they have been deliberately asked uh, to be a housewife and to remain a housewife and if they at all venture out of their homes to probably work, um, they would be mistreated by anyone. No, it is not true. They have chosen deliberately to be the housewives and, and some women make the choice of uh, uh, being career women. So it is, it is their choice, guys. But then this is talking about a, a, a society which used to exist, of course, 30, 40 years ago, uh, but students not anymore. Okay. Um, so uh, political expression of gender division and political mobilization in this, uh, in this question helped to improve women's role in public life. We now find women working as scientists, doctors, engineers, lawyers, managers, college <coughs> and university teachers, which were earlier not considered suitable for women. In some parts of the world, for example, uh, in Scandinavian countries such as Sweden, Finland, and Norway, the participation of women in public life is very high. In our country, women still lag much behind men despite some improvement since independence. Ours is still a male-dominated uh, patriarchal society. Women face disadvantages, discrimination, and oppression in various ways. Students, um, you guys are in now class 10, so use some head and some intelligence of your own. Uh, just see uh, the world around you. Do you see that uh, women are being kind of uh, disadvantaged and discriminated and people are beating them and they are being oppressed? No, not at all. Students, the main division is bet between those who have a decent life okay and those who do not have a decent life if people do not have a decent life they do not have decent incomes they are the disadvantaged lot whether a, he happens to be a woman uh, or a man they, you would always find them uh, struggling every day every moment of their lives to just to ensure that they have three meals a day and they can uh, feed their children uh, and and people who have the resources people who have a decent amount of income whether man or a woman you would see them having a great time it is not that if you enter the malls you would only see the men loitering around if you you it is not going to happen that if you enter restaurants you would see only men eating there do you see that no in the streets of Dehradun have you seen only the men driving cars and only the men driving scooters clearly not you see a lot of women doing that as well so guys it is about who has access to resources and who doesn't have access to resources if there could be millions of and millions of men in this country who do not have uh, access to resources and because they do not have access to resources they are underprivileged and they are a disadvantaged lot and it is nothing to do with the fact that they happen to be uh, men you know men are also being disadvantaged but it is essentially a fight about uh, access to resources if you do not have access to resources with a man or a woman you would be disadvantaged and if you have access to resources with a man or a woman you would find yourself in a much better place so that's how this chapter should be uh, uh, dealt with and students and i reiterate you guys are in now class 10 so just open your your horizons and broaden your minds and then uh, read this chapter uh, which of course has is a part of your syllabus and of course we have to complete this okay thank you